Hi guys, in this video we're going to ask what is internal energy? Then we'll look at heating and we'll finish with a summary. So what is internal energy? Well it's going to turn out that by internal energy we kind of mean the energy that you can't see because it's to do with the particles that make up the matter. So for example, how much energy does a jug of water on the ground have? Now initially this might seem like kind of a silly question. The jug is not moving so it has no kinetic energy and it's not raised off the ground so it has no potential energy. So it looks like the jug has no energy but it does have energy, we just have to look closer. Like I hinted at earlier, the energy is found in the interactions and motion of the particles in the substance. So with the jug, we imagine that if we looked really closely at a certain part of it, we would be able to see the individual particles and these particles interact with each other, giving them potential energy and they also move around, which means that they have kinetic energy. So let's look at these ideas in more detail. So for example, any vibrating or moving particle has energy in its kinetic energy store. So for example, here is a particle that's moving and here is the energy in its kinetic energy store. And we know that faster particles will have more kinetic energy. So a particle with all this extra energy in its kinetic energy store must be moving faster. So we know these particles have kinetic energy, but they also have potential energy. And the thing is the positions of the particles result in the particles having energy in these potential energy stores. Let's say we looked at two particles and the bond between them was short, then they might have a small amount of potential energy. But if these particles are further apart, we would say they had more potential energy. Just like how if you're higher up off of the ground or further away from the ground, you have more gravitational potential energy. So let's imagine we have two particles which are interacting but are further apart, then we see there is more energy in their potential energy stores. So the constituent particles of the matter have kinetic and potential energies and the total energy in the kinetic and potential energy stores is what we would call the internal energy of the whole system. So that is internal energy is equal to the total kinetic energy added to the total potential energy. Now something that's quite interesting is that it turns out when we talk about thermal energy or we're talking about the heat of a substance, we're just talking about how much kinetic energy does its particles have. So energy in the thermal energy store is simply the energy in the object's kinetic energy store. So what we're saying is that how hot this bit of water is, is all to do with just how fast the particles in the substance are moving. This is interesting because now we can realize that heating a system or adding heat energy to a system is all about transferring energy to the particles that make it up. And this in turn, changes the internal energy of the substance. So heating is all about internal energy. For example, we know that the heat that goes into the object might go into its thermal energy store, which is actually exactly the same as the kinetic energy store of the particles inside. So we now understand that heating an object contributes to its internal energy, which can result in changing the temperature or could result in changing the state of the object. So it turns out that heating a substance can lead to a change in its state or its temperature. And we can see a good example of this because both of these occur to some extent when we use a kettle. Now we know that we use a kettle to get hot water for maybe tea or coffee, but we also know that steam can be seen leaving the kettle once the water has started boiling. So here, a change of state must have occurred to turn the water from liquid water to gas water. So here is our water in the kettle and here is some of the steam that's been released and we know that some of the heat from the kettle has gone into changing the state of the water. On the other hand, we know that the purpose of the kettle all along was to heat up the water. So the water we pour out is hot. So a change in temperature has also occurred. So in each case, we see that we have a change in temperature and a change of state and both of these changes are a result of heating by the kettle. 
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Provide smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.